what the picture is of, it'll make you think of something. So there's nothing wrong with expanding that into a story. So how can we expand that into a story? Let's let's go with the easy to get your teeth out, hard to get or easy to get your teeth in, hard to get them out. I mean, think of some of the stories you could tell with that. It could be a specific thing that happened to you. It could be you saw a five-year-old. You were walking around the state fair and you saw a five-year-old chew into one and lose first tooth. Could be um, you had you had to end up spending two thousand dollars in dental work because you thought it was a great idea to eat one and it really wasn't. I mean, there's so many places you could go, and it's just a photo of apples. There's really nothing. It's a great photo, but you know, it's a photo of apples. But still, each of you probably had a different first thought when you saw the picture of what it was and what it represented. Um, some other tips. Don't apologize for not posting. We um, Here are two tips. Um, either people notice that you didn't post and they wondered and they might have contacted you, but they don't really want a long explanation of what on your blog. Or nobody noticed and you're just making yourself look inconsistent. So just jump right back in. Post the latest story in your life. Do not apologize. Just jump back in with both feet. Um, if you're um, looking for great um, memes, um, go to um, it's NAB Low Como, which started out as National Blog Posting Month in response to National Novel Writing Month. And it was in November, and it has grown into a site that every month they have one theme. Um, I, one that I remember recently was fan. And you're supposed to spend your month writing about fans. Now, there are all kinds of fans. You can be fans of the Steelers. You can be sorry to say you're fans of the Pirates. You can um, have just installed a new fan in your house. All kinds of ways to say what you're a fan about, what the fans in your life are. That's just one that I remember recently. Do you remember what September is? I don't. I apologize. Um, so, and then people are sharing their posts, which then may help you get, oh, yeah, I'm also a fan of X. And it's just um, a great way to um, kind of keep yourself going for an entire month because what you do becomes routine. Um, and um, what I haven't done for a while, but I used to do a lot in the early days, was ask people to ask you questions or ask for inspiration. Um, I just watched a blogger do this recently. People emailed her questions, and she answered them on her blog. Um, it may not be the most critically acclaimed posts that you're going to write about those, but people want to know those things. That's why they asked you. And answering them continues all of your topics that you can write about and continues to generate some traffic because people want to see what's going to be asked next and what your answer is. Um, you can also revisit what you've written. Beware your archives, though, because you will be embarrassed about how your writing has changed, how your thoughts about X, Y, and Z have changed. So, I mean, it is a really good idea to revisit what you've written. My thoughts have changed about lots of things over the past 10 years. So I've had to eat a little crow, admit that I'm eating a little crow, and rewrite some of the stuff that I've written back in the day. I'm going to let um, Michelle talk about finding ways to track ideas because we were just talking about this the other day. Um, I'm horrible, absolutely, positively horrendous about I will get in the car, drive home, and in my head I'm thinking about, oh, I'll post about this tonight, and I'll have 10, 15, 20 ideas. And then, you know, I'll make dinner and take care of Alexis and things will happen. And she goes to bed and I sit down in front of the laptop and I'm like, I got nothing. It's like, when you were in the car, you had 30 things. Where did they go? Um, I'm really bad about making sure I track ideas when I come up with them. Recently, I've started trying to make notes in my phone. But then I run into 9.30, comes around, and I'm like, I have nothing. And I don't even think to look there where I have a whole list of ideas. Um, so if you have an efficient way of keeping track of ideas, please share it with me because I'm really bad about it. But, you know, if you can find one for yourself, it's a great way to sort of keep yourself going is to not draw a blank the minute you open up that laptop like I do, which is constantly. Um, also, I think one thing that I excel at, that I will, I will completely own the fact that I'm good at it, is making posting part of a routine. It is absolutely part of my daily routine. Some people go home, eat dinner, and then watch TV two hours. I go home, make dinner, take care of my kid, put her to bed, and then I sit down in front of the laptop. That's it's what I do every night after she goes to bed. I would rather sit in front of a laptop and have that hour of nobody's bothering me, nobody's clinging to me, nobody's calling my name, nobody's touching me. You know, everybody's gone. I like to spend that time in front of the laptop writing a blog post. That's my way of unwinding at the end of the day. So that's my routine. That's what I do. I don't think I could not do it. I I don't know that I could actually go sleep go to sleep without having sat down with my laptop and at least spent a couple of moments reflecting on the day. Because that's what it's about for me. It's reflecting on the day and what happened that day. 
Um, and lastly, don't feel like there is a minimum to posting. I've had a couple of people say that was the thing that stood out most from this session in previous years, is that I will absolutely give you permission to just post a picture and call it a day and go to bed, whatever, whatever your routine is. There's nothing wrong with only posting a picture or only posting a couple of words. It's your blog. You can do whatever you want. Nobody said you had to write 500 words every time you sat down. There's no, there is no blog laws that say, oh, you must do this or else it doesn't count because it's yours. Do what you want. So if you really stop and you're like, I need to at least post something so that I can stop feeling like I'm failing at this, throw a picture up and then you're past it. And then the next day you're ready to move on and do the next thing. So, questions, bring them on. Do you think there's a maximum? I mean, you mentioned seven pages. That's ridiculous. But um, if the Huffington Post book about blogging says that if you have to scroll down too far, then you've lost your audience. It goes back to your why. He asked, is there a maximum? Is there a most number of words you could you should post. Yeah. It goes back to your why. If you're posting because you want other people to read it, there might be because there does come a point where people won't scroll down anymore. But you know, in my head, there is no. I don't sit. I don't sit and look at the word count and bottom of my screen and go, oh, I, I need to go take some words out. I've never ever done that. Um, there are some blogs that I don't enjoy reading because they are too wordy, and it's. But it's more in how they tell the story than it is the number of words. Uh, for example, Deuce can write five pages and I'll probably go read it because of how she uses words. I happen to enjoy her writing style. Um, there have been people who are poor writers, but the story that they were telling was well written. Uh, for example, it's a horrible example, but it, it, it's a valid one. Um, someone who I know from the online universe was 22 weeks pregnant and, ha and had a stillborn daughter. So the post talking about her experience was really long. It was probably one of the longest blog posts I've ever seen. I read every single word because I was, I was feeling her emotions as she was telling the story. So I personally don't think there's a maximum. I think there's a maximum. Yeah. It's, it's whatever works for you and what whatever works for that particular story. I'm all over the place for life. If you're writing to share information specifically about a topic, you probably don't want to be too long. Um, people lose focus, see something shiny, and look away. Um, but if you are, it comes back to your why. I'm very wordy. If you're going, if I'm writing about adoption, I'm it's going to go on for a while. And I'm sorry because I have lots to say. Um, but don't apologize if you have gone long. Don't say, oh, I'm sorry, this post got so long. No, own that you have just been super wordy and end your post. You don't need to apologize for it. Hey, um, the novel for most return. Your oh, turn? Yeah. Okay, so. And yeah. I want to ask you how you guys, uh, I know Michelle uses Flickr for managing your photographs. Is that the only thing that you use on your blog? Did you mention that you were uh, getting rid of some of your old photos? Um, I actually use Photo Bucket as well. Okay. I use Photo Bucket when I absolutely don't want anyone to steal a picture because searches on Photo Bucket are absolutely horrendous okay. and there's just no good way for anybody to get to anything there. Um, videos also go there because YouTube is like where trolls go to live and breed and love. So I don't ever put videos on YouTube because it's, I'm sharing information in my personal life. So it's just not appropriate for me. Um, there's Picasso. Yeah. Um, if you're using WordPress, you can upload straight to your blog as long as you want to resize it though so it doesn't eat up your entire um, bandwidth. Now, um, how do you usually find out if someone's been taking one of your pictures up? Because the, unless they're linking directly to your website, I don't know how to do it. Um, people warn me. Um, I've had people email me, hey, your photo's on such and such a site. Um, that's happened three or four times. Um, Flickr doesn't. Does Flickr still have the stats where you can see where people are clicking them from? So if they've actually like clicked share, and it has the link. You can um, watch it that way as well. I um, I had somebody who blatantly stole a photo with just the straight stuff. And I'm like, you guys are dumb. It's stealing content. Um, but yeah, they're, um, sometimes people think they're doing the right thing. They will say, oh, this photo is by Jenna Hatfield. I have Google Alerts set up for my name. So if they do it that way, I'm like, mm, you're so almost there, but not quite. That's not how it's done. So there are various ways to go about it. Um, if you if you have uploaded to your own self-hosted website, um, you're going to see the links coming in through any of your stats when people have accessed that photo elsewhere. If they've hot linked, all of those ways are easy ways to keep track of it. Um, I 
went through various phases where I did put um, watermarks on my photos, and then I didn't, and then I did, and then I didn't, and I'm currently not. Um, but just remember, um, if people are stealing your photo, they don't care about your watermark, and they're going to crop it out if they really, really want to steal your photo in some aspect of it, or just put it on their site and not care that it has a watermark. So, other things to consider about photos. How often is too often? Oh. There's no such thing. So, like, I mean, because I know I we share a blog, and you know, she has something scheduled, and I'm not thinking to look on the schedule, and I hit publish. And then she's like, what are you doing? I have something there. <laughs> I mean. Um, I, I personally don't think there's any such thing as too much. It, when content comes to you, it comes to you. Uh, I think in a couple examples, sports or multiplying is one who does very similar to you. Both mom and dad post pretty much daily. So what? Um, I think we could all probably agree that Jimmy Montanez could not possibly post or not. <laughs> you know, it just depends on what your why is and what what you're trying to do. If you're trying to document information about your lives and you've got a story and you're one of those people who needs to write it right away or you're not going to actually ever write it, then by all means. And you can always schedule posts further out too. If you start to feel like you're posting six in one day and then nothing for two weeks, then maybe it's time to look at how can I schedule these out. It's still okay to all write them all at once, but maybe then that's a good time to schedule them out a little bit. If you're annoying yourself, it's too much. That's a good, that's a good one. Yes? Uh, have you noticed any success in supporting your blog with social media like Facebook or Twitter? Um, I get a lot of traffic from Facebook, um, whether I have shared my own link or somebody else shares it. Um, I get a lot of traffic from Twitter. I even certainly get traffic from Google+. Who knew? Um, Michelle's going to talk later today about StumbleUpon, and you want to attend to that one because she will explain how it works if you don't know and how to use it to your advantage and how it will suck if you use it wrong. So. <laughs> yeah, I, pers I personally hate Facebook with a fire of probably 70 million suns, maybe more than that. Um, Facebook is just a giant hole of suck for me in terms of who I have as friends in my personal account. And the interface is awful and the security is awful and everything about it in my mind is bad software design. So I hate it, but I get so much traffic from it. It's ridiculous. But on the other hand, my personal account, pretty much all that runs is a feed of blog posts. I very, very rarely actually update it, me, myself, and I, because it's just a weird mix of people. I've had in-laws, people from high school, social media friends. that You just don't play well together, and the security isn't, isn't where I think it needs to be to make it where I can keep everybody compartmentalized. So all it is is an RSS feed, and yet tons of people click that. It's probably family members, whatever. So, um, I personally need a lot of traffic from social media. I post my links and I post one a day. Right when I hit publish, I post it to Twitter, and I'll probably get a couple hundred hits off of that. Yes. How do you reconcile your business life versus your personal life? I work, like, part of my job is social media, so I feel like I want to do some professional stuff. But I just haven't been able to find that balance. I am the queen of niches. Um, I have separate blogs, um, which kind of, on the one hand, if I ever wanted to be a super famous blogger with millions of hits, it's never going to happen because I have separate things going on in my life. Um, but it works for me. My family is all on one blog. Anything that I'm talking about, adoption, whether it's personal or in the news world, that's a separate blog. And then my photography even though I share photography on all three, it's another separate blog, and that's also my writing, it's my professional site, and I have to keep them separate, because um, I'm kind of an organizational freak, and um, it, it works for me, because I can write on my professional site about the new camera lens, or um, the new writing conference, or whatever's going on over here, and I don't feel like I'm boring the people who are coming to my site that are looking specifically for reading, or for family stuff, or that I'm not confusing the people about adoption. It just works for me. Some people do everything all on one blog, and that's fine. It comes back to your why. Um, but finding that balance took me many years. Um, once I finally kind of fell into my career of choice, um, it just made sense for me to have separate spaces um, where I could be me kind of off the cuff over here, me in an informational sense here, and be the very, very professional me over here. 
Um, it goes back to why people have separate Facebook accounts. Um, so you can be yourself in one and the professional you in the other. Do you cross promote so that if you're that yes, I do. Um, from I have one Twitter account for everything because I was I thought about at one point having multiple Twitter accounts and I was like I don't have time for that. Um, so yes, everything goes to my one Twitter account and my Facebook. And um, people who are new will click on everything. People who know me will click on what they are interested in. So and then as people get to know me, they know what they want to click on from which site and what they don't. And um, it's just. Um, about getting yourself out there and letting people know who you are and what you're writing and why. Yeah, I think in terms of separating professional from personal, we are on the exact opposite ends of the spectrum. My blogging career is completely 100% separate from my professional career, um, and that's by design. It's it's what works for me. Uh, Jenna completely blurs the lines, but it's because she works in an industry where so, she is social media. That's, that's what she does is social media. So. There's some things that she can do that I would never do, but there's also I also have a lot more freedom than she does. Like she can't take sides in a mommy blogger war because she works for blogger and that would not go over very well if she were to publicly say something about it. So really, it's understanding what your industry is okay with and finding where you're comfortable within that. Easier said than done. The question is for the tipping point for success, and I know success is just having your your words published, but Success as far as followers, is it 8,000 per month, is it 10,000 per month? Or, and what kind of put you over the edge to get to whatever number you're, you guys are at? I, I think success is if at night you go to bed happy with what you've put out on the social media world. Um, I think there are some extremely, Yankee Draw is my example of a really good blog that have, doesn't have as much traffic as it should. No idea why it doesn't. She writes really well. Her photographs are beautiful. Her story is amazing. She's got some great history. And she's just a, an overall a nice person. Those of you who've met her can probably attain to so that. It's absolutely true. No idea why she doesn't have more traffic. Um, I think a lot of it is luck. And I know for me it's luck. And just being in the right place at the right time and, and things like that. And as large bloggers, what do you consider someone who's creeping to try to get more? Or someone who's maybe, you know, trying to, or someone who's kind of asking for a favor from you? Um, I tend, I generally don't, I get a fair number of people emailing saying, hey, can you post my link? And the answer is going to always be no, unless it fits in with something I was talking about anyway, because mine is a very personal blog, and that's exactly what it's for. I, I'm not here to promote that restaurant on the street, that's not what I'm doing. Um, but I might post about Scarehouse because Scarehouse is a part of a big part of a fundraiser that I'm doing and hugely successful and I love it and I would go there anyway. So it's it's what fits in with my actual why, why I'm wanting in the first place. I've certainly done some sponsored posts that weren't sponsored because I just love those people and I've certainly done some sponsored posts that never ever again will I buy that product of my golf club. It's it just whatever works for that day. Um, success isn't about numbers, it's not about numbers of comments, it's not about the book deal. Um, it's as she said, it's being happy at the end of the day. It's also being comfortable with yourself. Um, there was a point in time where I wanted the hits, I wanted the 15 minutes of fame, and it's I've watched it. the other people um, burn out quickly. And I'm at a place where I have followers, that's great, and but I have friendships that mean more. Um, if I get to book deal ever, hey, that's great, you should buy it. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm not going to make you follow me on Twitter. I'm not going to be mad if you unfollow me unless you're Michelle. Um, and it's just kind of finding that comfort level with what you're doing. And that goes against some of the things in the business world where X means Y and you get Z and it means success. Um, Blogging lets you be successful by your own terms, and learning to accept that is kind of freeing because you can say, okay, well, nobody commented on that, that was a really killer piece, and I am proud of it, and I feel successful for having written it and pressing the publish button because there are so many people who won't ever press the publish button on something they've written, and it is a success to have done it. So keep that in mind. That's my end of my inspirational speech for the day. Uh, this kind of cross-promoting again, but how do you 
not get sick of having to be in every single search network. Like I feel like I can I can blog something, but then when I have to take that and then spend another hour and a half posting it on every single place that I have an account, I have to try to remember possibly. I have plugins for Facebook and Twitter. I don't do anything. I press the publish button. They are automatically posted to Twitter and Facebook. I don't do anything else. Um, Elisa from Blogger was just speaking at Blogger Handmade on Thursday and said a very important thing. You don't have to be active on all of the social networks. Use what works best for you. If you're getting most of your hits from Facebook, make sure you're engaging your Facebook people just a little bit, like she does with her bird baby page. If you're getting most of your hits from Twitter because you're using some great hashtags, then go ahead and nurture that a little bit. If you are, um, if you have great hits from YouTube, just use what works best for you. Let go of the other crap because there's lots of crap out there. We can all admit that, right? Um, you don't need to waste your time with what doesn't work. Um, and if you outgrow a social network, like you can't stand to look at Facebook, then outgrow it. It's okay. You can be your own person. Very inspirational today. Yeah, but there's plugins available. If you feel like you have to post to all of those different networks, find those plugins. You do a Google search for it. Uh, WordPress is great for plugins that will automatically post to everything. But you'll never see me post to Google+. Plus. I love Google+. Plus. I want to murder Facebook in its sleep and move to Google+. Plus. problem is that what's great about Google+, Plus is what's not going to attract the people I need over there. So it's, it's kind of pointless to the right people there. So I, just, it, I have an account. Every once in a while I'll go look and it's fine. Um, a great example about growing a Plurk. Anybody remember Plurk? It was around for like five minutes. It's, at, it was, it's Google Plus before Google Plus existed. It was you post something and then there's a conversation with it. And I loved it because it was a chance to be able to actually talk about something and really sort of hash it out. And the security on it was really excellent. Um, we used to use it actually during when Lost was on. There would be like 15 or 20 of us who would log into Plurk and become a Lost Plurk. And we would talk about the show that was going on. So anybody who didn't want to see that could just mute the conversation and just ignore it. So there was no spoilers. You know how on Twitter, if you say anything that happened on your TV, the West Coast yells at you instantly? We didn't have to worry about that because they could just mute us and ignore the conversation. But there came a point where it wasn't a good use of my time anymore. So I there's, you know, I would still get traffic from it if I were to post that drama point. So I care. Right. What advice would you give to PR professionals who are trying to reach out to bloggers? Be genuine. Um, I get approximately 20 pitches a day with baby products. Please open my site and see that my kid is no longer in diapers and maybe that it's not appropriate to catch me with that. Um, also, don't invite me to your event tomorrow night in New York City because there's bird right in the name and like, um, the form letters and things like that that go out are really just, anybody who's been around for a any amount of time has any traffic automatically deletes because we can see Dear Blogger or Dear Miss and the right name is wrong and we'll, we'll catch you in something we won't even read the rest of it. But for example, um, it's probably been two years ago now, it was before I was doing sponsored posts at all. It wasn't even on my agenda. I was actually very against them at the time. But Craft approached me and said, we have this thing coming up. We're looking for 10 bloggers who just want to talk about their hometown. That was the whole idea of the promotion. And they were like, you're very hometown oriented. You think you'd be a good fit for this. And they sent all the information. It was very obvious they knew that they were talking to the right person and that they had actually read through more than just the last two posts. So that genuineness is what got my attention. And I was like, you know what? This is a good fit. I, I do want to work with you. Uh, but the number of how many photos maybe you think you get sent of so-and-so celebrity tried this product? Please post it. It's, I mean, it, it's insane, and you're you're fighting with that noise. You have to find a way to be to stand out, and usually that's by being genuine and really knowing who you're talking to. I don't think those email blasts that go to five thousand bloggers are anywhere near as effective as two well selected emails where you took the time to write them personally. Yeah, I got a blog last week, or a blog, an email for last week for my blog that hasn't existed for the last four years. And I was like, really? You couldn't just click on the link and see that doesn't work? You guys are awesome. So yeah, know your um, know who you're emailing um, because I can tell immediately and it just immediately is deleted. Anything else? Do you use guest bloggers? And if so, how do you find them? I do not. Um, but working for Blogger, I um, syndicate and feature lots of wonderful, wonderful bloggers. Um, but I do not use guest bloggers. 
I have a couple of times, um, and it was Ask a Friend. Um, Jane Montanus guest posted on my site one time because she opened her big fat mouth on Twitter and volunteered herself. And I'm not going to tell her no. I'm going to hold her to it. Um, it's generally, even if we're on... The thing with me is if I were to take a break from blogging, it would be like on vacation or because we're moving or something like that. But that's exactly when things are happening that I want to remember. I mean, if I didn't actually blog during our vacations, I would miss so many stories because they would just become a blur by the end of the week. So I personally don't use them because I want that stuff remembered. So I make it a point to find a, a moment to get it written down. Usually, if you just go on Twitter and see any guest bloggers, 20 people will volunteer because it's a good way. It's, it's a really good way of sharing traffic and driving traffic for both people. Anything else? Going, going? Thanks, guys, so much for coming out. But before you leave the room, I have to do one evil thing. Um, those of you who have been around his for social media for a while may remember that last year, um, Jenny and I did Crazy Scary, an event at Scarehouse where she had to walk through the haunt by herself and screamed the entire time. Um, and I won the bet. There was a bet involved, and whoever lost had to go through the biggest fear. I won the bet, but I still ended up in a blue dress. If you have a picture of that, if you could delete it, I will pay you. Very <laughs> lots, lots of money. You, you can even have a hug if you'll delete it. But I'll do anything. Um, we're going to do that again this year. We've changed the challenges, and we're not going to be competing to sell tickets. We're just going to work together to sell tickets. But that's going to be coming up October 19th. So if you can come out, um, I can guarantee you that you will have fun because I don't know anybody who was like, I hate you for making me go. Everybody had fun. Uh, Carly in the back section. She's one I drug to, and she was like, I had fun. I hate you. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see you October 19th because it's going to be a lot of fun.